Okay, so for this question then, we've got to find this area R, bounded by the curve C, the x-axis, and the line L. Now if you had a go at this and just want to check out the answer, best to fast forward, obviously, because it's a very long solution. And I'm going to take you slowly through the method. And that method is to, first of all, split this area R into two sections by drawing a line down from P to the x-axis. I'm going to work out the area of this first section here where we've got the curve crossing the x-axis. We're going to need to find this coordinate here later on. I'm going to call it A. We've got this point down here which I'm going to call C, okay, where P that vertical line P from P crosses the x-axis. And we're going to work out this area by integrating x times the natural log of x with respect to x between the limits A and C. I'm going to need to work out the coordinates of A in order to do that. Then I'm going to go on to work out the area of the triangle. I'm going to need to know this coordinate where the line L crosses the x-axis. I'm going to call this part here the point B. And in order to find out the coordinates of B, I'm going to need to establish the equation of L. OK, so let's start first of all by getting the coordinates of A. And we do that by setting Y on the curve here to naught. OK, so let's just put that when OK, x times the natural log of x equals 0. And we can see that we've got a product here equaling 0. So either x equals 0, so we'll put therefore x equals 0, or natural log of x equals 0. And the natural log of x equals 0 when x equals 1. Well, clearly it's not 0 at a. That's the point, the origin here. A has to have an x-coordinate, that is, of 1. So therefore, we've got the a-coordinate is 1, 0. All right. So now I'm in a position to be able to work out this area here because I'll just integrate x times the natural log of x between a and c. That would be between the x-coordinate of 1, and we can see that the c-coordinate is e0. It's got the same x-coordinate as p. All right. Anyway, we'll do that integral later. What I want to do next is establish the equation of the line L. So we'll just put here a subtitle for L. And to get the equation of L, I have a point on the line, the point P, E, E. That I can use as my x1, y1 when it comes to using the equation of the line in the form y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. But I need the gradient m. And I can get that gradient m by working out the gradient of the tangent at, of the curve C at the point P. And then applying the perpendicular gradient rule. So I need to get that general gradient on the curve C, and I do that by differentiating x natural log of x. And to do that, I'm going to need to use the product rule, which I'm assuming you're familiar with. If not, do check out my tutorials on it. OK, so I take the x and multiply it by the differential of the other part there, natural log of x. The differential of natural log of x with respect to x is 1 over x. And then I plus, and then I take the other part, natural log of x, and I multiply it by the differential of x, which is just simply 1. And if I tidy this up, what we end up with is 1 here plus the natural log of x. So when I get the gradient of the tangent at p, that's when x equals e. And so when x equals e, I get that the gradient dy by dx is equal to 1 plus the natural log of e. 
And the natural log of e is 1, so we've got 1 plus 1, so that's 2. So that's the gradient of my tangent then at p. So I apply the perpendicular gradient rule to get the gradient of l now. So we'll just say that therefore the gradient of the normal, or I'll just say gradient of l, okay, we know it's normal. So the perpendicular gradient rule is just to take the negative reciprocal of this gradient. So it's going to equal then minus one half. All right. So now I'm in a position to get the grade, the equation, I should say, of the line L. So therefore the equation of L is, okay, and so applying y minus y1 then equals m bracket x minus x1. So we've got y minus y1, so that's the e there, the y coordinate at p, equals the gradient, which is minus a half, times all of x minus x1, x1 being e here. Now I'm not going to expand that. All I need to do to get the coordinates of b, let's just say for b, okay, or I could say at b, for b, we know that the y-coordinate will be 0. So I just substitute that into here, and I've got negative e equals, and I'm going to expand the bracket as well, it'll be easier, minus half x or minus x over 2, and then we've got minus a half times minus e, so that's going to be plus e over 2. So I just need to rearrange this for x, and I can see that if I multiply through by 2, I'm just going to get minus 2e equals minus x plus e. And then if I add x to both sides and add 2e to both sides, then I can see that therefore x equals 3e. Okay, you might want to put a few more steps in there just to check it out but I can see I'm running out of room, so that's why I just jumped a bit. Okay, so it follows then that the x-coordinate at b is 3e, all right, and the y-coordinate will be 0. Okay, well that's giving me the x-coordinates at a and b. So now I'm in a position to work out, let's say, this area here, this region APC. So we'll say area... APC, and we get that area just by doing the integral of x times the natural log of x with respect to x, going between the limits from A to C, that's between 1 and E. Okay, so we need to do integration by parts here. So I'm assuming you're familiar with that. When you've got natural log of x, this is the u part, and the x is the dv dx part, okay? So we take the u part, natural log of x, and we multiply it by the integral of the other part. So that's going to be x squared over 2. Then I subtract the integral of the part that I just integrated, which was x squared over 2 and multiply it by the differential of the other part. So differential of natural log of x is going to be 1 over x. And we integrate that with respect to x. And we'll just put in some square brackets here, because on the end here, we put our limits. That is going from 1 to e. Okay. Now I can see that if we clean this up, we can divide that x into there, so we end up with a half x here. So I'm going to tidy up this first term. I'm going to put the x squared over 2 first of all. all right? x squared over 2, natural log of x. Now I've got to integrate minus a half x here. And the integral of minus a half x is going to be minus a quarter x squared. So we get minus a quarter x squared. I'm going to write x squared over 4, okay, instead. And we've got our 
limits that we've got to put in as well. Okay, going from 1 to E. Just need to make our substitution now. We put E through, so we get E squared over 2 times the natural log of E. But the natural log of E is 1. So just get E squared over 2. Then substitute E in here, we've got minus E squared over 4. And then we subtract and we put 1 through. Now the natural log of 1 is 0, so that term goes. And we've now got minus 1 squared, which is 1, 1 over 4, 1 quarter there. So what we have here is half E squared minus a quarter E squared, so that's going to be a quarter E squared, E squared over 4 same thing and then we've got plus a quarter so that's the area of our first region here under the curve now we need the area of the triangle CPB so we'll just put that in here area of triangle CPB and we can use the familiar half base times height formula Half the base, the base will be the distance from C to B. We know B has an X coordinate of 3E from down here, and we know the X coordinate of C is E, so it's 3E minus E, which is going to be 2E. And we've got to multiply it by the height, and the height is this height PC here, which is the Y coordinate of P, E. All right. And then we can just simplify this, the 2's cancel, so we're just left with E squared. So we now are in a position to work out then the area of R. It's going to be the sum of the two areas, so we've got E squared over 4, quarter E squared in other words, plus a quarter, and then plus this area here, plus E squared. And so you can see that if we group the E squareds together, a quarter E squared plus a whole E squared, that's one and a quarter E squared. I'm going to write that as five E squared over four. And then we've just got that plus a quarter. And that is in the form that we required. OK, so you could write square units on the end because it is an area. All right, that's up to you. Um, I prefer to do that, but you're not going to lose any marks if you don't do that. Okay, so uh, there you go. Quite a long question. Hope you're able to do it. If not, at least see where you might have gone wrong.